Listen, Talk, Repeat podcast. I'm Wendy Capewell, your Relationship Specialist, and this podcast is all about things relating and affecting relationships. I'll be interviewing guests who are experts in their profession, learning more about what they do and how they help others. In some episodes, I'll be sharing some insights and tips of my own. So settle back and enjoy. Hi, it's Wendy again, and today I've got the pleasure of uh, talking to Maxine Clancy. She is the founder of the Divorce T- Detox, the Divorce Detox, and Get Divorce Fit, both online coaching programs to help individuals transform and thrive during a divorce or relationship breakup. So, such a pleasure to have you here today, Maxine. And can you tell us more about what you do and who you are? Hi, Wendy. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so, yeah, I'm a relationship coach, originally trained as a transpersonal psychotherapist um, back in, oh, finished my training in 2000. So, quite a few years ago now. And um, I really work with people in helping them to have a transformation in their love life. Um, That could be through going through divorce, going through a breakup, or it could be, you know, I'm a calling in the one coach. So a lot of people come to me and they say, I've been single forever. How can I find love? (laughs) So that's what I help people to do, to, to find love, create love, have more love, and really step into their own expression of love in the world. Fabulous. And bearing in mind that you are a coach and also you're trained as a psychotherapist, what do you see as the difference between the two? So it's really interesting. When I first trained as a psychotherapist, um, so I started my training in 96, 95, 96, um, we didn't really have coaches then. And um, I loved training as a psychotherapist. I think it's given me a huge background in understanding why we do what we do, you know, our psyche, our nature, um, the psychology of behavior, et cetera. Um, But at the end of my training, I realized that I'm probably not suited to traditional psychotherapy in that I'm quite a dynamic and a more active person. In traditional psychotherapy, you tend to, you know, sit back a little bit, listen, reflect. And that's not to say I don't do that. I just think, you know, the nature of my personality is more suited to coaching. And coaching is generally very like, okay, what's the problem? Where are we going to with a very direct A to B or A to C process? And psychotherapy tends to be a little bit more, okay, we'll go where the flow with the client is. So, So it's a little bit different in the way, that's how I see it anyway. Okay, yeah, and I, I agree with you in some respects because I think there are some counsellors, psychotherapists who do. It's what the client brings and getting mm. them to heal themselves. Whereas I think, although my, my background is psychotherapy. And yes, I know. Well, and I, yes, I'm <laughs> trained as person centered, and yes. it was very much. I see it like a nodding dog, like the Churchill dog in the back of a car. You know? <laughs> yes. And, and that really freaks me out, actually. And, and just leaving complete silences, like it can be very much in psychodynamic kind of, of therapy. Of course, yeah. I find that quite punishing, punitive for a client. Mm, because they mm. want to, as you say, they want to move forward. They want some support and help and challenged and and much more and i see myself much more that way you know mm. let's interact let's how we how are you going to get how are you going to get from a to b yes mm. okay let's see where you are and what caused it but now what can you do to actually move yourself on and and how can i help and how can we do this so yeah, yeah i get totally. it yeah well i mean it, it makes sense the psychodynamic approach where you're looking at the projections and the silences are to allow the, the client to have those projections come up and reveal them um yeah. the challenge is and this is this is this is i think particularly what i love about coaching particularly with a psychotherapeutic background is that we understand all of that we have great depth and we have great understanding of that yet we can explain that to the client a lot more easily and therefore help them to move forward um you know and get where they need to be 
in less sessions than it would take in traditional psychodynamic psychotherapy. And that's not to say there isn't a place for it. I think there's definitely a place for it, but, and I, and it's certainly suited to certain types of personalities, etc. But I think, you know, really what we want is we want to help people to heal their pain and their suffering and help them to sort of step into their own light and to shine brightly and, and to really create the lives that we, that they want. And my belief is we are way more powerful than we give ourselves credit for. And I think that some of the thera psychotherapeutic therapies assume that the, the client isn't very powerful. And I, I don't agree with that. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think we could talk about this for a long time. And I think. Oh, I'm sure we could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there are, there, are there are differences. And as you say, each has its place and it is mm. down to the client. So I think. Um, understanding the client's needs is really important and I think that's something you probably do too is understanding them understanding their what they want and then tailoring it to the client mm. yeah so. yeah well do you know what's interesting you you know that's a really interesting point because um what I teach my clients um you know particularly when people have gone through a breakup or you know divorce mm. or you know even when people have been single for a really long time, one of the things they really lack is that emotional confidence and that ability to live from their own core and their center. And they don't know what they need, what they need or what they feel because they're so disconnected from it. So yeah. it's about helping clients to get in contact with that and be present to themselves so that then they can begin to start to ask for what they need if they need to ask other people mm -hmm. or actually start to give themselves what they need because you know most people are so disconnected i know i was a long long time ago very disconnected from my feelings people would say to me how do you feel and i'd say fine and then i met, when i was training as a psychotherapist i remember one day i was walking up the stairs and one of my tutors said to me how are you maxine and i said fine and he made a comment and i thought to myself i was but God, I always say fine. Like, what am I really feeling? <laughs> you know? And that's not to say you have to act on every feeling. You're not supposed to act on every feeling. But it's a feedback mechanism for yourself so that you become aware and awaken to what is really going on within you. So, yeah, that's why I think it's so important to help clients, you know, acknowledge what they need and begin to see and feel it and listen to themselves. So important. <laughs> Definitely. And I find that when I ask people, I ask clients, who are you? What makes you the person you are? They mm. really are so disconnected. They haven't got a clue. Mm. Mm. And then I say, well, if you don't know who you are, how do you know what you want from other people, from relationships, yeah. anything else? And that gets them thinking. Yes. Um, and if they can't figure it out for themselves, I say, I ask them to go and ask their friends Mm. how they perceive them yeah because that then starts it working because if you can't figure out what it is what you stand for what is about you then sometimes a, a friend can open mm. that door for you yeah totally totally yeah so what stops people from getting over a breakup or divorce what, what gets in the way Ah, so breakups and divorces. So there's a big myth and, and it actually is the same with, um, with grief to, to some degree as well. But the myth is that time heals. Um, time doesn't heal anything. Um, well, maybe cuts and grazes on your body. Time will help to heal that. But you notice that there's always a scab or a scar left over. Um, it is really about making the choice to heal that allows people to heal. And I, I mean, I work with a lot of people that come and they've been divorced for 10, you know, 15 years and, and they haven't found love again. Um, or if they have, they've, they've, you know, gone through another relationship breakup, etc. So, so, and, and they've assumed that just by allowing time to pass that they will feel better and that's, we often say, oh, don't worry, time, you'll feel better with time, et cetera, et cetera. And it's really seeking to heal yourself and doing the work because every, every relationship, uh, and I'm sure you probably agree, agree with me here, Wendy, is that every relationship is an opportunity to evolve and to heal within ourselves. The, you know, the, the wounded child, the inner child, the bits that, you know, unfortunately, even with the best parenting in the, in the world, there's going to be something that is, has created some wound in relationship to love within us. 
And relationships are an opportunity to evolve that consciousness and to heal those, those wounded parts of us. And when we break up, if we, don't, if we don't do the work, if we don't look at ourselves and say, okay, what is it really calling for me to take responsibility for? What is it really calling for me to own, you know, that bit that I'm disowning within myself? Where can I get my power back? If we don't do that, then one, we don't heal properly. And two, we just go on and repeat the pattern in another relationship. So people, you know, second divorces, I think it's like 67% of mm. second marriages will end in divorce. I know I've been married twice, <laughs> you know, so, and, and, and I didn't do the full healing. I thought I had, I'd done quite a bit, but I hadn't really fully owned what I needed to own. And so therefore you recreate the same thing. So yeah. I'm a firm believer, you know, seek professional help, go find that person that, you know, whatever it is for you that resonates with you, but ask for help because one, it will ease your suffering and your pain. You don't have to suffer for as long as, as people do. And, and that, that's the bit that I find. Um, and it's the same with grief. You know, people with grief, they can get so caught. There's a natural grieving process for, for grief and loss. Yeah. But people can get really stuck in that dynamic where they just think, well, you know, time will eventually heal this. It, it won't. You need to do the work. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> or fortunately, well, I, I can say unfortunately or fortunately. But if you don't do the work, you're going to get stuck and and feel miserable yeah. and unhappy, and yeah. you won't move forward, and you will possibly make the same mistakes again, mm. attracting maybe the wrong person into your life. Um, so does it isn't isn't it better to actually you know do the work, heal yourself, and then mm. be able to have happier life oh, that's my view anyway so uh, I mean, way, you can have the misery maybe but but at least you're learning more i think there's learning whereas the, if you stay stuck you're stuck and you're just going around a hamster wheel yeah and i well i think a couple of things happen i i think you know and this can upset or, or be confrontational for some people to hear this but you know when we when we're suffering or you know when when we um, are going through difficult times, often we get a lot of significance from that and we can get attention and unconsciously, like we're not going out, oh, I'm gonna stay in my grief or I'm gonna stay sad about my divorce so I can get attention. But one of the payoffs is that we do get attention, we get love and we get connection with people and we start to feel a bit significant at a time when we feel very mm -hmm. insignificant, when we feel disconnected, when maybe we, don't like being alone and all these things. So talking about the problem over and over and over is a way of reconnecting with other people. And that reconnection in, in that n disempowering way keeps us stuck. So, and the other thing is, is that sometimes, you know, we have to take responsibility for what we've created. I mean, I've said at the beginning, we're powerful, creative beings. And part of, you know, when a relationship breaks up, there's always two sides and then there's a, another reality. So, you know, it, we, we're in that mentality of we blame people because if we blame people, then we don't have to look at ourselves. And possibly that's what we've grown up with. We learn, you know, we live in a big society. If you watch EastEnders, you know that, you know, most people like feel like they're victims and they're powerless in their lives. And we don't want to claim our power. Yes, yet when we you know, really go on a path of, okay, let me heal this. Let me look at myself. Let me take responsibility. That's when we reclaim our power. That's when we say, oh, if I was behaving like, you know, if I was constantly being a people pleaser in my relationship and always, you know, doing things for other people when I, you know, wasn't looking after myself or wasn't taking time to do things for myself. And then I get angry and resentful and then I lash out, you know, if that's my pattern, then the hard work is, is actually in setting boundaries and listening to yourself and honoring yourself. And that's a change in the way you relate. And that's a new skill set. And that's yeah. sometimes more scary than actually just staying in the discomfort of what you know. And the fact that, you know, you've lost someone and you don't have someone in your bed at night or you've no, no one to share the weekends with or something, you know? Yeah. Um, so I feel for people, it's, it's challenging. I, you know, I, in my second divorce, I, I, you know, it took me, um, you know, a considerable amount of time to, to start to really look at myself and say, okay, where was I responsible? Where, where was I, you know, where was I part of the creation of this, 
of this divorce. And um, it takes a lot of courage to do that. So I really admire people that, you know, that do stop and say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go and, and take a look at myself. Yeah. And as you know, because I've shared with, with you and others that I grew up being a people pleaser. Yes. And I didn't know who I was. And mm. uh, yeah, so then when I was in a relationship that, I, yes, I wasn't being the real me. Mm. Mm. I also agree with you on the other side of it, taking responsibility for our part in it. That's really a tough one when you actually start to look at it yourself and then you challenge mm. somebody else who's come out of a, an unhealthy relationship or, a, a, yeah whatever that relationship however it broke up mm. and, and owning that and saying well what part did i play in that mm. and that sometimes makes yeah makes uncomfortable it does situation. yeah yeah you know i was just talking with a client this morning and um she's going through um my divorce detox program she's on like session six so this is the point where i'm really expecting my client to have this major transformation so um she she come back and she was like oh my god <laughs> she said i see what i've been doing all this time she said i've been you know i've been attracting these men that are powerful because i don't think i've got any power you know and i i constantly drop everything for yeah. them and i center my whole life around them and doing what they want to do and i and then i get irritated and annoyed that that that, that i feel you know, unfulfilled. And she said, but I'm not doing anything that I want to do anymore. Mm. And it was like, you know, it was such a wake up call for her. She's, she's like, Oh my God, I've been doing this in all my relationships. And, and the other thing is that she, she said, you know, and I, 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 I use this, this, this anger. She said, I get really angry with them. She said, but actually I'm so angry with myself. She said, I didn't realize I was projecting my anger outside of myself. And I'm like, yep that's what you've been doing all along you know and when you wake up to that now you can't go back well you can easily fall into the trap of you know that behavior mm. but there's a bit of you that's that's aware isn't there that's a, a bit awoken to it and you start to notice it even more and i said to her you know you're not supposed to act upon every feeling you feel but you need to be aware of that feeling that's coming up. So it's, it's a feedback mechanism for you to say, okay, hold on. What is it that I need within myself? What is it that I need to do differently? What is it that I really want? You know? Um, so I love it when that happens, when clients just go, oh my gosh, you know, I've created this and, and, and I can change it because if you've created it, you can change it. That's where the power is. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, as you say, although there's the awakening and that awful feeling of, oh gosh, what have I been doing? It is knowing mm. I have that power within me and I can take my power back. And, and that's such an amazing feeling, isn't it? To yeah. know that you can really take that back. Um, yeah. Can I share something from my own personal experience, my, my personal life? So um, I, I um, so my second husband had um, a number of affairs. And um, I discovered his affair um, or the current affair that he was having. And um, I was madly in love. You know, we had two kids mm. and I, I loved him and blah, blah, blah. And I said to him, you know, we're bigger than this. We can get through this. We've got, you know, we're coaches. We can get lots of help, you know. And I sort of went into, you know, let me control everything mode type sort of thing. Let me, let me keep my life together. And um, anyway, he decided, decided to leave. And then sort of two years into our divorce process, um, he the, one of the women that he had the affair with came to live in the same country so we used to live in south africa and she came to live in england and he went somewhere with her and she met someone that was a new friend of mine in my new circle of friends who was a coach who then started doing some coaching with her and introduced her into my whole circle of friends so bearing in mind i had been betrayed by my husband yeah i was going through the divorce this woman who was part of that whole betrayal thing was now introduced into my new friends and i i was like i was you cannot imagine the language that was coming out of my mouth right because i was like how could he do this he's introduced it to my i was going mad mental crazy and then i woke up literally in the middle of the night with this dream that and these words in my head saying if you are experiencing betrayal 
you, you've got that vibration within you. And I remember it was like three, four o'clock in the morning and I sat down and I wrote like this whole timeline of how often I'd been betrayed and where I had betrayed other people and where I had betrayed myself. And it was, it was amazing, Wendy, because suddenly I was like, ah, yeah, that's only happening because I haven't learned that betrayal. I'm betraying myself. And, and I realized I kept betraying myself in the relationship by putting his needs before my own, by putting his career in front of my own. Do you, do you know what I mean? So it was like, mm. suddenly, this woman became this gift. <laughs> you know, I mean, I really talk about transforming and seeing that, yeah, part of, I was partly responsible for that because I kept betraying myself. I went to live in South Africa when I wanted to stay in England. Do you know what I mean? Little things yeah. like that, that you, that you rationalize and you say, yeah, I'm going to do this because we love each other. I'm going to do this because, you know, this is what he wants or he's more important than me. You know, I come, I grew up in that age where, you know, the man was the most important person in the household. And you probably had that in your family upbringing as well. And it's, it's, you know, and, and so um, I'm actually friends with that woman now. I can actually sit in the same room with her. We can sit, have a glass of wine together. I'm not saying that we're best buddies. You know, I don't no. phone her up all the time. But I, I don't have any charge. I don't have any emotional charge around her whatsoever. And I wish her well. We've, we've actually been on a, on a trip and like with lots of other people to um, South mm. Africa because there was a group of us doing the same trip. So to me, that's transformation. That is that is what I want my clients to have. I, you know, I get on really well with my ex-husband. We have a great laugh. We, you know, we go out to dinner with our kids. We can send, you know, texts. Sure, every now and then he might annoy me or irritate me, but, but it's, it's, it's a healthy relationship. And I think that everybody can have that, but it's a choice. You know, you really got to choose that for yourself. And particularly if you've got children, for your children. And I, and I think there's great power in, in, in creating that. So, yeah, so that's my little story. <laughs> I think it's a great story to share and I think yeah. that's um I think the first part is a very common one. Yes. Um I think the fact that you were able to transform that and change it around and take your power back and have that relationship mm. is is really test testimony to not only how you have transformed yourself but how you can share that with others. I think yes. that's amazing. It's really Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. And the other thing I, uh, that came up for me was about boundaries, because I think so often the problems when we want to please others is that we don't put the boundaries in for ourselves or for others. And therefore it mm. can be that, that situation where people are unhappy in their relationships is because they uh, haven't put the boundaries in for themselves. So they've allowed their partner to do something that doesn't fit for them. Yep. But they, that that partner has acted like that um, teenager who goes, "I've tried it on. I've got away mm -hmm. with it. Yep. And now I'm going to try a bit more and a bit more. And that's when it erodes everything because the partner who's got away with it all has just not taken responsibility and mm. not being mm. a partner. You know, they're not being a party and a partner, an equal partner, mm. and the mm. other one can feel they're being controlled. And yes. So it's not obvious, but it's mm. that drip, drip of like water on a stone because it just mm. away. And and then they think, well, that's okay. Well, I got away with that. I can stay out. For example, give an example of, of, of a client at the moment. He was saying, well, I can go out with my friends. I can just stay out as long as I want. And then it was taking it further and I can just have women friends and I can have affairs. Oh, right. And, yeah, because not that, that, that she realized that he was having affairs, but because he'd got away with so much, mm. you know, just doing his own thing and not being a within the relationship i'm not saying we can't go out with friends we can't do those things but it was going beyond the point of it was taking the piss basically <laughs> yeah well I, I think i think in that situation what you're describing there i mean certain alarm bells go off for me in that there's there's probably not a whole lot of truth going on or transparency mm. in that relationship and so part of what happens is we have this you know, so, so the way I look at relationships is we have to make a commitment to reveal ourselves 
and to create closeness. And the minute you're feeling disconnection or you're not close to your partner, guaranteed it's because there's somewhere that you're not being completely honest about something. Whether it's about your fears about something, you know, it could be a really simple thing like you're actually really irritated with your partner because, you know, the way they, I don't know, the the way they make love to you or something. <laughs> you know, that's quite a big thing actually. But you know, like like you know, the way they touch you or the when they come in that they ignore you and they give the yeah. children attention and they don't come and see you and they don't give you a kiss. But you don't speak up about that and you don't yeah. acknowledge that one, you're upset about it. And what you would really love is for your partner to come to you first in the, when they come into the house and acknowledge you. And what happens is in the moments that we stop sharing and start to hide our feelings because we believe mm. we're, not we're not worthy we're you know we don't deserve that or you know we, we think we're being too demanding or whatever it is that we're making up about that particular thing that we're afraid to share you start to have these little secrets and these little lies and you start mm. to create more disconnection and more distance between you and you know what it's, it's like if you don't go to the gym for a, a month you don't notice yeah. it but if you don't go to the gym for a whole year you know, you notice it, don't you? And suddenly you go, yeah. why am I, why have I put on so much weight? And suddenly people look at their relationships and they go, why are we so far apart? You know, like, how did we get here? How did we get here? And it's all those little, little bits where you've not been honest and suddenly you've got this big, huge gap and you've got a problem mm. and it all starts from not being honest. And, and in situations like that, you know, if you go back to boundaries, it's where you don't create that safe boundary in your relationship to say, okay, when something crops up as a problem, it's here for both of us to grow and for our relationship to flourish. Most mm. people see a problem or a conflict as a really negative thing and they avoid it and they run and they push mm. it under the carpet. And they think that if there's conflict or there's something wrong that they have to blame each other. And it goes back to, okay, I'm responsible for me, you're responsible for you. And therefore, from that place, we can, we can look at problems and we can look at them and, and work through them healthily as opposed to shoving it under the carpet. Or, you know, in my family, there was pro there, when there was a problem, there was always a big fight. <laughs> there was like loud voices and that's scary. So you learn yeah. either don't talk about it hide it if you make a mistake definitely don't own up to it you know do you know what I mean so for yeah. me a lot of my you know training in psychotherapy was learning oh it's okay it's safe to say oh I made a mistake <laughs> you know it's yeah. like something like that but a lot of people they don't like I I, I you know no. if, we feel, if we if we say something we don't know what the response is going to be so we don't say anything and that's sad, isn't it? It's so sad. It's really it's, sad. Yeah, some beautiful relationships start off with so much hope and possibility. And yeah. then, you know, the distance gets created and, and people find it hard to, to, to recover from that. Mm. I, I agree with you. And I think it's so sad, as you say. And I just feel that more and more because we're living in a disposable society mm, that mm. people then see their relationships as disposable because they just absolutely you know, there's something oh that looks better than what i've got mm. instead of working what they've got and then they go from one relationship to another mm. i know and, and do you know and, and i agree like <clears throat> i i still stand by um obviously look my my ex-husband chose that he didn't want to do the work in that relationship which mm. i remember finding really really difficult you know to accept at the time um particularly because of the work we both sort of did do together mm. and, I, and i firmly believe even now had we have stayed together i think our you know we would have transformed it and our relationship would have been really amazing but obviously you know we we've gone down the path we went and and the gift in that is it's it set me on a journey of really well what is this really about because you know, I believe you can have a healthy divorce. I believe that you can transform and thrive from your divorce, um, both of you. And um, so it set me on the path and that's what I've created as a result of that. So, so you know, I'm grateful for that. But it's, it's really interesting. I think there's a lot of people, when they come to me and they're in that stage where they haven't quite left the relationship, if they start to do, you know, to look at themselves and start to take responsibility, 
it can take one person to start to be different that that relationship can really turn around so there is hope and there you know if you really loved each other in the first place and you know you can reconnect with that love and you can choose it then I think there's still, you know, it's not doesn't always mean the relationship has to end if, if you're both willing to do some work, you know. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I've I I I think so often people look at their relationship and say, what am I getting out of it instead mm. of what am I putting into it? Yeah. Yeah. And they're so ready to sit back and say, well, he, she isn't doing mm. this. Mm. And therefore, well, if they're not bothering, I'm not bothering yeah and they just sit back and and i say well if you had an investment account you just opened it and didn't put anything in it would you expect to gain any interest from it no you wouldn't it is something about you've got to put got to invest into it absolutely so yeah so why don't people have the love they want well for me i think it stems from what i call um the big love lie and i think that it's because we believe love exists outside of ourselves. So, you know, we're babies and babies are pure love consciousness. So they come into the world and that's why everyone wants to touch them, get close to them because they're drawn to that magnetic loving consciousness. They, 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 they don't have anything, you know, put on them yet. <laughs> so, so, but the baby needs the mother, the father, it needs to be fed, it needs to be nurtured, it needs to be support, it needs to be stroked. Well, they've proven that if you don't stroke a baby, you know, in orphanages, et cetera, then they become listless and they, and they can die. You know, that, that's, that's proven. So we learn that love is external in the things that we do or how the success we have, the jobs we have, or, you know, how well you do at school and you know, I'm not saying we shouldn't praise our children. We need to praise our children. But, you know, we get very externally orientated. And as we grow up, that external orientation becomes our way of being instead of being internally orientated in our source of love and that connection to that divine loving consciousness that is who we truly are. So I believe particularly that when we don't have the love we want, we think, I'll be, you know, I'll have that love when I get that partner and then I'll be loved by them. And because they love me so much that that's going to define who I am. And that's going to make me this amazing person. And then they leave and then we think, Oh, all that love has gone. <laughs> so, yeah. So I think what happens is when we're so orientated externally, um, all our, you know, and we're all our belief systems get triggered, um, from, you know, we're unworthy of love we're not lovable, we're not enough. I mean, everybody has that. I think everybody, would you agree with me that thinks on some level that they're not enough to some degree? I think, yes, I, I would agree. Whether it, whatever area of our lives we feel that, then I think we do feel that. Yeah. And yeah, I think we're trying to prove that we are enough. And I think it's doing the work and saying, do you know what? I am okay. But I think even so, even with all the other work I've done on myself, there's still those areas where it comes up and says, I just get that self doubt. Mm. And then I have to talk myself through it and mm. figure out why I feel like that. And often it just is history. It mm. comes up and bites me. And I think just having that awareness and then working through it mm. is very mm. valuable because we're learning constantly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And so I think that, you know, like you say, it, it gets triggered because we've got all these, you know, memories and files. Mm. And in fact, because our nervous system and the way our, you know, our bodies work and our nervous system, you know, we, we, we forget actually how amazing we are as human beings, don't we? We, we take, we take it for granted. We wake up every morning, hopefully, <laughs> you know, you get out, of bed you do your automatic thing and most of the time we are actually automatic um yeah. very very rarely do we have a different thought you know i had a i had a completely new thought yesterday about time and um, i actually said to my boyfriend i said he said I'll, t I'll text you now so 20 minutes later he no i said he said i'll call you now and i think it was about half an hour later he called me and during that time i started thinking well what is now because Actually, if you always say, I'll be there now, you're never late because now is now, isn't it? Did you get that? Like, I, I was like, well, he's not going to be late when he calls me because 
He said, I'll text, I'll call you now. But now is only like right now is now with us, you know, and we use these structures of time. Time is like the whole thing concept of time. And this is what happens when we are in reaction to something and we get such an emotional charge. That is the point when you have to go stop right now. The reality that you think is happening is based on something way back there in another moment of time. And that's when you know, when you've got big emotional charges around stuff, that's when you know that you are not dealing with something right there in that moment. You're dealing with historical stuff that needs to be cleared within you, which needs to be healed within you. And, you know, I find now I'm, I, I rarely react unless it's like really triggered or if I'm like stressed, mm. you know, if I've got some other stuff going on, but I find my ability to sort of step back and observe and sort of almost like hear that voice go, Oh, that's interesting. That's that little old chestnut going on right now. Do you know what I mean? Um, you know, so I think that's what happens. And, and, and particularly like love when we, even when we're in relationship, how many people do you know, Wendy, who are in relationship, they don't have the love they want and they've been in these <sighs> marriages for 20 odd years and they stay and they work they maybe they think they're working at it but with all due respect they're probably they're not really working at they're, they're working at the same problem with the same strategy and they don't have the love they want because they're so disconnected from each other and their own source of love and i think that it goes back to you you have have to you have to get back and and step in and have that emotional confidence and 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 fill yourself up from that that love you know that's within you before you can go out there and be loving you can't be loving in a relationship if you are constantly resentful and fed up and annoyed and peeved with other people exactly exactly and i think the other point that i find is so often is that um people say to me well i want i'm i need to make them happy or i want them to make me happy and we can't do that we can't put that on somebody else happiness yeah. our own happiness and love they're connected it has yeah. to come from within ourselves totally. we have to be content in our own skin we have to love ourselves we have to be happy within ourselves because we can't connect with anybody else or have that add-on which is is what it is it, it's not he makes me complete she makes me complete well no that has to come from within us and it's it's almost like the icing on the cake that delicious mm. lovely cake that you yes. really enjoy on its own mm. but that is actually special and in addition it's the icing on the top isn't it but not yeah. not that sickly sweet icing that you think yuck about it's no, no. really delightful yeah no i agree and and i think you know you you've used the phrase there which for me is, is such an indicator um of people not being responsible for their feelings and not being connected to their feelings is when you when you notice clients going they make me feel you make me feel no one makes you feel anything your feelings are your feelings when i feel xyz or i might feel xyz when your behavior is like this or when you do this and therefore i need you to you know it goes back to you know what you were talking earlier about that client and the um the um client that was you know pushing the boundaries is that there are always consequences to every behavior yeah. and in a relationship if you're in a couple if you're if one of the one of the persons is choosing to continuously stay out late night after night okay and then you know if you say i feel upset disappointed angry and the consequence of you staying out night after night is that we're going to end up you know never having sex together because we're all going to bed at a different time we're going to be disconnected we're going to argue if you explain the consequences rather than blame them you mm. will start to get a different response and also and the reason why people don't do that is because they're afraid of the reality of that which generally yeah. means if someone really doesn't care about how you feel and they're not worried about the consequences, then they're not invested in the relationship. No. The point is, why should you invest any more energy in that relationship? Exactly. Maybe 
that you know you either do the work or you you have to part ways and that's yeah. that's unfortunate but i think this is what happens so so often we're afraid of what what it really means even though deep inside we might know we're afraid of that and that's why we don't take action that's why we don't say things that we need, know we need to say yeah and i think that's so often why people won't do anything about the relationship mm, yeah they just i'm scared to try something different i'm scared to rock mm. the boat because i mm. i i'm worried it could make it worse well what if it made it better yeah yeah it could it could make it better definitely but, but that's that's where i find they just oh no i don't want to do this i'm i'm okay as it is i'm not happy but but it's better than nothing or that's mm. all it's worth or whatever and why second settle for second best mm, mm. you know well, when you can have really a great relationship if you just tweaked it if you mm, just started mm. being honest with each other if you started taking responsibility for your part in it as you so rightly said it's so sad and that's where you end up and i sometimes do as well end up with trying to figure out for people how to move on from that that mm. breakup yeah happy relationship it's it's really really sad isn't it it is it, it is and and um you know if people are listening and and they're in that place i think it's really important to knowledge acknowledge that it takes courage to to look at ourselves and takes courage to look at our relationships but actually there is always a silver lining you know mm. if you really embark on that if you listen to yourself and you and you know like deep in your heart that this relationship isn't serving you that you know that you can create or, or maybe you're not you maybe you don't have the confidence to know that it's definitely like the, or the trust or the faith to know that it's definitely going to come but if you are so uncomfortable in your relationship and so unhappy, then it's up to you to make that choice to find and seek your own happiness because you can, you can definitely create your own happiness. It doesn't matter what anyone else is doing around you, you can be happy, but that's a choice you have to make. And I really, you know, for your listeners to just to really say that, you know, you're never alone. There is always someone at hand that can help you. You know, you've got you, Wendy. You know, there's always, there's a book out there. There's, there's so much mm. stuff on YouTube. You know, you, even in your darkest moment, we've had so much things, you know, in the press at the moment with suicides and things. And I've had personal experience. My best friend, you know, committed suicide. And I really, you know, we are never alone. Someone, you know, just needs to reach out and, and share what is going on for them because often we think we are the only person that feels that way. Particularly if you're really stuck in that sense of, you know, where you feel unloved and where you feel alone, you feel that no one gets you, no one understands you, and you think you're the only person on the planet with this problem. Guaranteed you're not. So reach out, ask for help, don't suffer in silence. Um, you know, and, and it does take a little bit of courage, but you will begin to feel better by taking that first baby step and all of it is baby steps, you know? Um, mm. So that's what I, that's really what I say as well. I think it's really important to just acknowledge that for people. Yeah. Yeah. I think there is that fear and shame of feeling that you're the only one mm. and social media doesn't help because everybody's well, parading on, on social media about how wonderful their life is and how amazing their partner is and mm. all those other things and actually just it isn't that's not real that's that's another lie as well but when we measure that up and then you feel well i can't possibly share with anybody that my life is perfect that i'm not the happiest person in the world that my relationship isn't as good as it could be there's all that shame that's attached to it but actually so many more people are in that situation mm. and mm. they would care to admit they just need why do they need to put it on social media if they're that happy then they don't need to parade it well yeah i think that's so you could you maybe pause there because i was actually thinking about what you're saying i think there's a really interesting thing in around social media and trust um and i think that you know 
it's, it's, it's quite interesting because I, I for a long time haven't been in a relationship. I, I've dated. I've been like the dating mm. queen for the last five years. I've, I date guys for about three or four dates. And you know, I think the longest was three months or something like that. And, and because, you know, um, of the work I do and I'm involved in relationships, et cetera, et cetera. Um, when I trained as a calling in the one coach, um, which was about two, two years ago now, I, I was almost like, well, where's my man? You know, where's my relationship? Mm. Sort of thing. You know, I, I should, you know, and I can't coach people if I haven't got this relationship and blah, 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 blah. And, um, it's quite fascinating because I think what happens with social media is we end up comparing ourselves. Constantly. Yeah. And I know myself, like, you know, I sort of think to myself, oh, well, you know, how, how am I going to be this great coach? Even though I'm an amazing coach and I've been coaching for a long t- time, how can I help people find love if I haven't found it yet? Mm. You know, so right now I do post about my, my, my lovely, amazing boyfriend who, who I manifested on New Year's Eve this year, you know, because it's part of what I do. And also because I think it's really important to give hope. But I've also been there and, and said like, crap about being on your own and what it's like when you're lonely and you're single and so I think that you know we must not compare ourselves to other people no. because everybody is where they are okay yeah. and we have to accept we are where we are we're in you know the perfect place right now as my ex-husband says everything is on the way not in the way and it's really really important that we just recognize that you know what we see nothing is ever you know is never really what what we see isn't what we see is it it's like nothing is really as it seems no. even people you know you look at someone like kate spade who's clearly had a lot of money you don't know how much money she actually you know what i mean she's been very successful even like the beckhams i think is a really good example you know yeah. of what is you know they have a lot there's loads of rumors at the moment about, you know, are they going through divorce? You know, what is the nature of their relationship, et cetera, et cetera. And you could look at their lives and think, well, they've got so much money that mm-hmm. they sh- they'll be happy anyway. Or, or you could look at their lives and say, you know, well, what does it matter if they're getting divorced because of the fact that, you know, they, they've got so much money. And it, that's just our projection that makes us mm-hmm. feel better to rationalize our own selves. So I think it's really, you know, it's so important, as you say, to just get back in your own center, <laughs> live from yourself as opposed to comparing yourself, live from your own value, your own worth and stop yes. comparing yourself and everybody else and what they're doing on social media. In fact, spend less time on social media is my advice to be honest. Yeah, you know? live. yeah absolutely. Live. Yeah. And live it instead of just watching it, observing yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so you talk, you, you, Briefly mention the Calling in the One coaching program. Yes. And can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so um, I don't know if you've heard of Catherine Woodward Thomas. She is more better known for Conscious Uncoupling, where she helped Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin um, consciously uncouple, which basically means to have a very conscious and healthy divorce. Mm. Um, and she was um, best-selling or number one best-selling author, Calling in the One, and she's a family therapist. So I trained with her, and excuse me, I'm being mentored by her in 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 my work that I do as, as a coach. And really, the process is around um, uncovering the inner blocks to love. So you know, when we say, "Oh, there's there's no good men out there. They're all taken. You know, that is really about our own fears or our own inner beliefs that, you know, there's not enough or we're not enough. Um, or the fact that we've been so wounded in our relationship with love that we're so afraid that we're going to get hurt again, that we then sort of say, Oh, you know, there's no men out there. Or, you know, I'm looking for this certain type. I think it's fascinating when we look for that particular type out of all the different, you know, types of people there are in the world, men and women, we're looking for this one type of person and we can't find them. You know, so it's about looking at the inner locks and saying, you know, what is it we need to overcome within ourselves in order to create love? And most people find, and this is certainly what I found um, when they do Calling in the One, is they fall in love that transformation of love comes within yourself and so you're more magnetic to creating love because you 
more expressive in love in all different areas of your life, whether it's the work you do, whether it's, you know, with your children, with your family, your friends, whether it's, you know, for me, you know, I, I was at the time when I did my training, I, I was too afraid to sort of really go out there and ha- just, just coach. So I was still working in the corporate world and I just wanted to coach and do my own business. And because I had my two children that, you know, fundamentally I'm, I feel responsible for, and you know, their fa- mm. father obviously contributes, but you know, I have to look after the home and, it, and I was just kept saying, no, I can't, you know, leave my job. I need that security. And after doing the training, I was like, yeah, I'm leaving my job. <laughs> I was like, and the best thing I ever did, you know, and I gave myself that. And that's because I really, you know, reclaimed the love I have for myself. And, and that's really what happens in Calling in the One. But it is a seven step process and you have eight coaching sessions, um, but you work through the book. And it's a really powerful course in transforming the love in, in yourself and therefore the impact of that around you so I, yeah I love it it's brilliant really brilliant great so is it a book that you've written that goes with no this? no no so um Catherine Woodward Thomas wrote the book calling right. number one uh, I think she, I, don't, I don't know how many millions of copies have been sold or yeah it's like okay. so it's, it's a process over 200,000 people have gone through training and coaching um you know right. done the process it's it really does work and um yeah, she's, she's an amazing woman. She's done some great, you know, I, I love the work that she does. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a step-by-step process that takes you from, you know, look, starting to heal the resentments, look at yourself to, mm. you know, saying, well, I, she uses the phrase, what, what is love fulfilled? But I use, I prefer what is love reimagined because I think we have to reimagine mm. love, you know, when we've been heartbroken, that the way we saw love changes mm-hmm. and it shifts and we have to reimagine and re revision that. So for me, it's about, you know, what, 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 what is happy, healthy love look like now? You know? Yeah. So that's, that's the process you go through and it's, it's powerful, really powerful. Yeah. Great. It sounds really, really, really good. So how do people get in touch with you to find more about that? Um, so, well, my website's maxineclancy.com and um instagram i'm a big instagram person i love instagram so um i'm on there maxine clancy and um yeah divorce detox if you google the divorce detox um i'm finishing my book at the moment so i'm hoping that it's going to be out by the end of the year so that's my plan that's my big thing for 2018 to get that book out there but yeah they can contact me facebook um maxine clancy coaching on facebook as well great and I will put all the details in the show notes but Lovely, obviously thank you. people they may be listening to it in a you know they haven't got that, those details so it's useful for people to Absolutely, be able to hear yeah. it. anything else you want to add to this because I think it's been a fascinating conversation I've loved it but I just oh. want to say anything that you really want you know one thing that you want to really say or that I missed asking you or you've got a burning kind of chick yeah. or something do you know what I, this, I think this is, this is the, you know, like people say, well, wh- what do you do and how do you do it? And, blah. and really what I believe is that we are, you know, divine beings having this, you know, we're spiritual and everything that shows up is an opportunity for us to get closer to love. So whether, that, you know, and that's through opening ourselves up to the love that's within us and then you know, that magnifies around you. So, you know, you, we are powerful. You are powerful. Listeners, you are powerful and mm. you can have the love you want. And even if you think right now, what's this crazy woman talking about? <laughs> Opening my heart up and, you know, it is, it's, it's all within you. It's, it's your birthright. That's who you are. So just, you know, just choose it, like choose it, choose love every day. And if you're feeling depressed, it can seem like such a difficult thing to do. So just choose to feel a little bit better, you know, just take the small baby steps to feeling a little bit better, a little bit better. And then, you know, you can start to really just open yourselves up and, and it's possible for everybody. So ask for help. <laughs> I could talk yeah. for ages, Wendy. So, you know, you've got to have oh, I know. I, I think we both could. And I think there's a lot that <laughs> we both feel very passionate about. Yes. Um, yeah, I think we could talk forever. 
Um, maybe we should do another one another time. Yes, another time, time definitely. But yeah, it just I've really enjoyed talking to you today. I think it's been really interesting. I think there are things that I've learned from you as well as just sharing things that we both have in common and the way we work together. But I, I hope the listeners have really enjoyed it as much as I have. Oh, I hope so too. So yeah, much. no, it's been lovely. Thank you so much for inviting me. And oh, um, yeah, it's been a lovely welcome. conversation. I'm, I'm always inspired by these conversations. So thank you. You're welcome. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I really hope you enjoyed the podcast today. And you can always listen to others by uh, clicking on my website, www.yourrelationshipspecialist.co.uk and finding the podcast on there. You can also learn much more about me and get in touch or sign up for my newsletter. So until next time, bye for now.